Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Off the Glass podcast. Had a hectic, busy week in the NBA with the draft, additional trades, and free agency. Victor Wembanyama is finally a San Antonio Spur. Brandon Miller is a Charlotte Hornet. School is a trailblazer. Chris Porzingis is a Boston Celtic. And Chris Paul is now officially a <laughs> Golden State Warrior. That doesn't even sound right to say out loud. That's so um, gross. <laughs> yeah, busy week in the NBA, a lot of shakeup. So got a lot to cover on today's episode. But as always, how are we doing today, Dan? I'm doing good, man. I'm I'm doing good. Um, I'm a little disappointed, though, in the draft. I thought it was going to be a little bit more action going on in the draft, I'm going to be honest. But, yeah. you know, nevertheless, we still got a lot to talk about. So I'm doing I'm doing good. Yeah, like I said, I thought there was either there was either gonna be a lot of action or not a ton. It wasn't I thought there was not gonna be a real in between. And I felt like after the initial trades that happened the day before, um, it wasn't too much shake up on the day of. Um, so kind of fell into the ladder there, but could have seen the first dominoes fall for a couple of big superstar trades this offseason, but before we get into all of that, going to get the housekeeping out of the way first. If you are watching on YouTube, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. If you're listening on any podcast platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, go ahead and pre-download and save the show. And go ahead and leave a five-star review on the podcast. It helps us out a ton. Be sure to follow us on our socials on TikTok and on Instagram, Off the Glass Pod and Off the Glass Podcast. We appreciate all the support y'all have been showing to the content that we've been putting out um, on YouTube and on, on all the social platforms, so we appreciate it. But without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get right into the biggest thing that happened in the NBA this week. been a long time coming, especially if you are a, a draft head like some people are. This is the culmination of a year, two years, three years in some cases of scouting and analysis and putting together big boards and mock draft after mock draft and Thursday night was the night, and uh, like we had been saying for a long time, really for the last year, we knew the draft started at number two mm-hmm. because that man, Victor Wembanyama was the number one overall pick, and when they showed him with all the draft picks, he made them look like kids. <laughs> he is all of seven foot five, um, you know, the immediate interviews he did after you can kind of see the maturity and the poise, which is um, really incredible to see from someone at that age. Um, we're to think we're both four or five years older than him, which That's is crazy. crazy. <laughs> I think about that all the time with these guys that get drafted. I'm like, bro, you, like this dude is like 18, 19, yeah. bro. That is, that's, that's always going to make me feel old, bro. Yeah, but. He's got the the great the right and a great mindset about approaching all the the pressure that's going to be on him. Obviously, as arguably a top three biggest prospect ever, maybe higher than that. Anytime you're in conversations with LeBron and Kareem, like you are in a conversation to be one of the best, if not the best, draft prospect ever. So, mm-hmm. obviously, there's going to be a ton of eyeballs, ton of pressure on him um, to perform right away. Um, and he, I think, has his, his head on straight, understands that he can only control what he can control. And um, he said he's been putting in the work for, for years to get to this moment. So um, even to see him get emotional about it was, was great to see. But, um, again, that was the pick that was set in stone. Draft really started immediately after that with Charlotte on the clock. They've been going back and forth all day. I know we've both been vocal about what we think they should have done. Um, which was take Scoot Henderson and just go with the the talent over fit. Um, even if you do think that Brandon Miller is a better fit, which I can see the argument and I can agree with in some extent, right? Like you bring in somebody who excels at playing off the ball as an exceptional length, uh, lengthy shooter and shoot from range. That seems like a pretty seamless fit with um, LaMelo or Scoot. It might take some more time to develop and get the chemistry and kind of develop um, both of their games to play a little bit more off the ball to be utilized in that way. But if Scoot turns out to be this perennial all-star player that most people are projecting him to be, and Brandon Miller can still be a great NBA player, that will always be looked at as the wrong pick for that reason. Mm-hmm. And even if you get Scoot in there and 
you can't figure out a way to make the fit work, which I don't think could have happened. But let's say you don't think it could work similarly to what the Kings did with De'Aaron Fox and Tyrese Halliburton. They turned Tyrese Halliburton into an all-NBA, all-star center exactly. and then made the playoffs for the first time in, what was it, 16, 17 years. Mm -hmm. So if you take the talent, even if it doesn't fit, you can trade it for something that does that's on par with that talent level. Now you just have to pan and, and hope that Brandon Miller, you know, fits well with Lamelo. He continues to to build out and can be that type of player um, that can complement Lamelo's skill set really well um, there in Charlotte. And so, I saw a lot of mixed reviews um, from Charlotte fans. I saw Hornets fans are pissed. <laughs> yeah, there are videos of. <laughs> <laughs> and the video of the mascot in the arena after they announced the pick, putting his putting his hands in his head. That's crazy. Um, that's a bad look. Yeah, no, <laughs> you're not supposed to be doing look. that. You're not supposed to be doing that as a mascot. I didn't, no matter if they picked a freaking Grady Dick, bro. They was you were supposed to be like cheering, cheering your team on. That's your job. That's a bad look. So yeah, yeah um, people, it, it's it's tough though because people are treating Brandon Miller. Like I get it. I I feel like they should have picked Scoot. Um, for everything that you just said, like even if the fit isn't perfect, which I feel like they could play together. Lamelo can shoot the ball. I feel like he could play off the ball. Like I feel like they would complement each other well. And Lamelo is tall. It's not like you got two six two guards like right. Portland now has. It's just like it's not like you got two six two guards. It's like they Lamelo is tall. He can shoot. He can play off the ball. I I feel like they would have worked well together. But it's it's tough, man. Like you said. Just I would just go for the talent because at the end of the day, if it doesn't fit, you trade him away for more pieces. And if he ends up being better than Lamelo, you could possibly trade Lamelo. Like you have, you at least have the room and have the options to to do what you want. Rather than Brandon Miller doesn't really pan out, it's like all right, well, we just kind of sold on a draft pick, basically. Yeah, and um, you know, reports had come out that fans that were in the arena in Charlotte. They showed Brandon Miller on the big screen while the pick was still, you know, the time was running down on Charlotte's draft clock. And fans are booing <laughs> in the arena at the Jumbotron. And so then when the pick gets announced, it's like split. You have some cheers and some clapping and boos coming from all over the arena. Um, so not a, not a great situation there in Charlotte, at least from a, a fan base perspective. Um, I don't want that to take away from Brandon Miller. I think obviously is deserving of being picked in this range. Nothing against him as a player. It's just, again, in terms of talent, Scoot just projects and has a tool set to really be a franchise guy where you're bringing Brandon Miller in to be a complimentary piece on a Charlotte team where outside of LaMelo, no one's really proven themselves to be you know, really locked into that young core. Like, there are people that have had mm. flashes, right? Like, we've seen P.J. Washington, what he can do, right? Mark Williams had a really good second half of the season. I really like that pick for them, you know, last year in the draft. I think that he can project to be really well, but hasn't done a ton to really solidify himself yet. Again, still early for him. But even some of the guys that have been there for a few years, again, like I said, P.J. Washington, you know, Miles Bridges was having a great – start to the, the season was the last year and then obviously had off the court issues. So that's kind of all up in the air there. Um, so there's, they're not as locked in and set together as a team like the Rockets are like, they have a very, you know, assembled young core prior to draft night, same thing with Detroit, same thing with Orlando, the Hornets are a tier below all of that. So with that in mind, that I think is why you take the talent there, but Nonetheless, to go with Brandon Miller here, um, you know, we'll see how that shakes out in Charlotte. But what that does then is drop Scoot Henderson, who to many people, if Victor Wembanyama was not in this draft class, would be far and away the number one overall pick, you know, consensus decision, um, falls to three and falls into the Portland Trail Blazers laps. And just got announced also recently that he's going to be wearing – Double zero. That is disgusting. Jersey number. You don't that like it? No, that is disgusting, bro. I think it's name kind of clean. Name one player that looks good in double zero. Name it, doesn't one, get, it doesn't get worn that much. Bro, it, no, bro, that is – I always hate it. It didn't look zero, bad. When, when Gary Payne was wearing it, it didn't look too bad. Bro, yeah, John, didn't Melo have it on or am I bugging when he was in uh, Portland or am I thinking of something else? He might have. 
He might have. I'm, I'm pulling up I, a list now. Bro, double zero is – I always hated that, bro. Yeah, Carmelo did wear it in uh okay. in Portland. Jordan Clarkson. Ew, man. I just – Willie Cauley-Stein. Um, I don't like Kaminga, it, Aaron Gordon. He was with the Magic. Double zero. Uh, I'm telling Dame, I'm going to be twice as good as you, bro. You zero, I'm double zero. That's what he's saying. <laughs> But uh, I don't know, man. He, uh, he to me, me personally, I feel like he could have picked a, a better number than that. I don't like double zero. Yeah, um, <laughs> I, I definitely think it's interesting that he goes double zero when Dame is wearing zero. Um, I don't know if it's too much. Maybe we're looking into it deeper than we we need to. But they're not even gonna be in the same team come the end of the next season, so it doesn't even matter. That's the hope, right? That's kind of been what had been reported for a while is. Right, Dame is not big on a youth movement. If they keep the number three pick, that seems like they've made their decision. It's time for them to move on from Damian Lillard. Mm-hmm. Look, first of all, people need to stop asking him. They need to stop asking the Trailblazers. I don't want to hear nothing else from Damian Lillard. I don't want to hear any reports. I don't want to hear anything unless it is a trade or it's like, they added a no trade clause to his contract. Yeah. I don't want to hear <laughs> anything else because every single day, and if it's like the issues has been going on for like what three, four seasons now. Yeah. Will they? Won't they? He's gonna stay. Now he's gonna get traded. He doesn't want to do the youth movement. But I really like School Henderson. I'm gonna put. Look, I understand that all he can do is just answer the question that the media is asking him. So the media, stop asking the questions. Right. I'm right. tired of seeing the quotes. I'm tired of seeing the headlines. He was in a club the other night and it was playing Welcome to Miami. And people are in the, the chat talk foreshadowing. He's going to Miami. He's going to Miami. So he had to put out a statement. It's like, bro, just relax. I'm tired of talking about this dude. I don't all right. I don't care anymore. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm tired of talking about this dude. Not. Whether he gets traded at this point or not, it does not affect what I think about Damian Lillard as a basketball player. He could play the rest of his career in Portland and never make the conference finals. It's not going to change my opinion about Damian Lillard. If he wins a championship, all it's going to do to me is, like, impact his overall resume. But other than that, I'm not going to think of him any less if he wants to get traded now. All right, what was the guy's name? You, you sent me the clip earlier from Fox Sports. Um, uh, about what? What, was it, what are you talking about? The guy said that Damian Lillard has been like a failure in Portland. Oh, oh, the Carlton guy. I think that's his name. Some yeah. Chris, isn't it Chris Carlton? I don't know. Something like that. I don't know. That dude's an idiot. Um, right. For him to say that he's failed in Portland is, bro, this man has gone through every single roster possible. Has stayed through some of the wildest constructed rosters and just hoop. All he's done mm-hmm. is hoop, you know, bring no additional drama other than what the media keeps asking him because as fans, people want to see him compete for titles, which is understandable. But at the end of the day, if he's comfortable in Portland, he wants to stay in Portland, just, bro, just let it be at this point. Right. <laughs> the, the constant rumors are not doing anything. So to me, you take Scoot, it seems like a no-brainer. You move Dame for young pieces. You have a backcourt of Anthony Simons and Scoot Henderson, and then you bring in Shaden Sharp. You got off a dame for some young pieces and some draft capital. Maybe you let Jeremy Grant walk. You trade Nurkic, and, like, we start from scratch with a – this those three people alone, Simons, Sharp, and Scoot Henderson, that's great, a great, great young core. Mm-hmm. Great young core. 100%. Y'all are good. And just, like, please hit the reset button because this middle ground – it's, it's not worth it. If you're going to keep Dame, at least do something. Like, bring somebody in. Trade Nurkic. Like, figure out a way to get competent pieces around him now. But we got to get out of this middle area if you're if you're Portland. 100%. Um, but, yeah, like I said, I am sick and tired. Right, listen, Damian Lillard is one of my favorite players in the league. I am tired of talking about Damian Lillard, bro. I'm tired of the reports. Uh, Miami's, like, trying to trade for Damian Lillard. They're seeing if he's disgruntled over there. It just gave me a little, oh, I don't want to do the youth movement. But then again, it's like, I want to stay in Portland, but I want to win the championship. But, I, like, 
Bro, I don't care anymore. I really just don't. I genuinely just don't care. I'm tired of talking about it. I'm tired of reading about it. I do not care. If he, if he stays in Portland, fine. If he leaves, whatever. I don't care. I just really don't at this point. But, yeah, uh, going to the, tra the Trailblazers with this pick, I mean, it is a little interesting because I guess they kind of have to do something um, because, like we talked about, Scoot is a guard, Anthony Simons and Damian Lillard is like, I don't know. How is that rotation going to work? I don't understand. I don't know how that's going to work. So, I mean, I feel like something has to happen. But, again, I feel like it's just the fact that we've talked about them moving one, either this third pick or Damian Lillard for so long that it's like, all right, when it actually does happen, we're going to be like, all right, whatever. Like, right. we don't really care. <laughs> like, it, it really does not matter to me. But, yeah, um, I, I like you said, I hope they do move Damian Lillard because I would – it that would be an exciting back or that would be an exciting young team to watch. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully, with Portland's track record, they don't ruin it and ruin all these young players because they've – another – poverty organization that does not know how to help your superstar or build a quality team around your superstar. So um, I'm excited to see them guys play, though. Um, I'm definitely going to be excited for Summer League. That's going to be, oh, my God, that's going to be amazing. But mm -hmm. I I'm excited to see what they do moving forward if they do go into this full rebuild. Or even yeah. if they don't, like, what pieces are they going to bring in? Who are they going to try to add to try to build a contender right now? So it can be exciting. I just hope that they can – hurry up and get to that point and make that decision. I'm tired of sitting in this right. this fork in the road and they're just like playing both sides, like either rebuild or try to contend one or the other. You couldn't go wrong just picking one route, but keeping the pick, you take school and then not making a move is yes. the only wrong decision here. Right. So hopefully this is that domino that we would hope sparks a, rebuild mode for this Portland team because look a fast break with school Henderson and Shaden Sharp is must see TV that's about 90 inches of vertical combined crazy so, they're gonna be throwing lobs they're gonna be jumping out the gym that'll be an exciting exciting young core to watch um speaking of exciting young cores the Houston Rockets then with the fourth pick take men Thompson from overtime elite um, and they are pairing him up with Jalen Green and Kevin Porter Jr. and Shingun and Tari Eason and are gearing up for what is rumored to be a very big free agency window for the Houston Rockets. They do have the most cap space in the league. I think they have over $60 million in cap space for this offseason. Um, they've been linked to guys, obviously, like James Harden. Um, Brooke Lopez has been another big name that they've they've been reported to. Um, are preparing to basically just outbid Milwaukee on um, to try to pull Brooke Lopez away, which would be interesting. Obviously, I think you force Shingun potentially to the four in that scenario. Yeah. Um, and if you move Jabari Smith to the three, that's a very, very tall team. Um, but I think it's doable, obviously, with the shooting between um, – obviously, between all three of those guys can shoot the three ball, but um, that then gives space for Brook Lopez to potentially kind of screen and be a pick-and-pop kind of guy. You still have Shingun being able to work in the post as a playmaker, and then Jabari still being able to spot up there as well. I, I like – I could see that as well. I like that, you know, kind of fit. Dylan Brooks, another name that they've been linked to potentially um, as well. So preparing for a very, very big spend offseason here for the Rockets to hopefully go from um, – and really kick into gear this, you know, rebuild process. They've kind of been in this high lottery range for the last few seasons now. We want to see them take a step similar to like an Oklahoma City Thunder. You know, we have enough talent put together now. Let's actually go and take a, take that first step. Let's start pushing for a playing seat. Let's get out of the lottery if we can. Um, and with a guy like Emin Thompson, um, just I think it's a great fit athletically what he's able to do for them um, just from a pure um, athlete standpoint, um, being, you know, having the vertical that he does, having the feel for the game that he does. Um, he's more of the, the point guard between the, the twins there. So um, very good playmaker. Um, watch some of his games at overtime elite. Um, he makes some very, very ridiculous passes. Again, we both have had questions about the, the level of competition there, but, just even the skill set to be able to make some of those passes, I think some of that is going to be translatable. And then obviously the athleticism is going to translate. Um, and, the, and the biggest flaw for, for both of the twins is, right, the shooting, which 
luckily for them, it's something that you can continue to get better at. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I like this pick a lot. I think it's a great fit. I said, you just continue to consolidate talent there in Houston. And if you make a couple of splashes in free agency, they're setting their, themselves up really well. Um, and his twin brother gets picked back to back. Um, so Asar goes right after a pick five to Detroit to round up the top five there in the draft. Overtime um, elite, man. Two top five picks out. Listen. Put hey, them man. on the map. Put right. them on the map. Who knows? If they pan out, they have good rookie years. Um, I would not be shocked if we start seeing big, big name prospects, top 10 in their classes, maybe um, going to overtime elite. Um, because it, all right, it, it works. <laughs> we had yeah. – Four of the top five picks in this year's draft did not play NCAA basketball. Obviously, Victor was overseas. School is a G League. And the Thompson Twins both coming from overtime elite, which is, I think, great for the league. But I also think it's even better for the prospects. Yeah, 100%. Give them multiple options, multiple avenues right. that they can go down. Yeah, I agree. All right, because the ability to – Obviously, NIL helps, right? You don't have to go and just basically play for these schools for free or on a scholarship. Mm -hmm. Um, You're able to go overseas and make money. You're able to go to the G League and make money and be, you know, get coached by NBA level coaches playing against NBA caliber talent. Go to a league like Overtime Elite and hoop on a bunch of AAU kids. (laughs) 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 I mean, like, but in all seriousness, like, go to a league that really is doing things differently from a marketing perspective, almost like how they brand the league, how it's constructed is definitely taking a different approach to like how they market their product. Um, Definitely geared towards younger generation, um, which is going to be great for your off the court status. Right. Like, so there's always, and when you're at that talent level, like you just go and perform you're not going to ruin your draft stock, right? Uh, so People will find you are, no matter where you are. Right. All of them are, are viable options. So I think Asar is a great pickup here for Detroit. Again, a team that has a really strong young core already with, with Cade Cunningham, um, Jay Ivey, and then Jalen Duren as well, um, bringing in Asar to that as well. Um, even you know, throw James Wiseman into that mix too. Um They've got some choices there in Detroit, and they've got some, you know, veteran guys in like Bogdanovich who they can trade for more draft capital or, um, you know, just continue to hold on to and maybe consolidate into making maybe a bigger splash trade at some point. Um, but I'm really excited to watch this Detroit team um, moving forward. So with that, that was the top five of the draft. Some of the other picks that I really like just off the top of my head, um, Bilal Koulibaly going to the Wizards in a trade. Um, with the Pacers, they basically swap seven and eight. Um, and Koulibaly goes to a Washington team that is extremely young. He was kind of viewed as one of the prospects that had some of the highest upside. I think he's six seven with a seven two wingspan. Um, yeah, crazy arms. <laughs> um, great defender. Um, has a good feel for for rim protection around the rim, and just has a lot of the raw skills that you would see in someone um, that could develop into being a really good two way player. Uh, it just needs time to develop. Um, and when you're a team like Washington, you just made this the hardest reset ever, right? You just traded all of your good players mm-hmm. and Kuzma's about to walk, right? Start fresh. You got Jordan Poole now who's about to put up 30 plus a night he's in about Washington. To go off. Yeah, he's about <laughs> to go off. I can't wait. I'm watching them games. They're going to lose, but he's going to yeah. get his. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it makes a ton of sense, right? Like just go for the upside. There's no immediate rush. Same thing for a guy like Johnny Davis. There's no immediate rush for you to have to be a huge contributor right now. Just continue to develop, find your rhythm, find your role within this organization. Um, and if they can piece some of those, like they hit on this pick, and if they can get Johnny Davis to you know work together, that little trio between the three of them could prove to be nice. And you know, you look a couple of years, a couple of years down the road, um, Washington could be building something, something nice there. Um, any other picks that you really liked here in the, the first or second round of this year's draft? Um, no, nah, not really. I, like I said, I'm not a huge draft guy, so, like, I'd be lying if I said I know most of these guys I, I really don't know. Like, I'm not a big, like, um, like prospect guy, so I'm really just excited to see how all these guys pan out once they get to the league, see how they can contribute to whether they if they go to a rebuilding team, whether these later picks go to contenders. 
see if they can contribute. So I'm just excited, man. I'm excited to have new new faces in the league, basically. Yeah. Um, what do you think about Brady Dick's fit? Nah, it wasn't it, bro. I ain't gonna lie. That fit wasn't it, bro. I'm sorry. It wasn't it. The Dorothy fit, I'm not. I Red sequin it. turtleneck with the blazer. I, I wasn't rocking with it. I, I, I respect you for trying to be different, bro, but ah, could try something else, brother. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> yeah, that, I was not was not feeling that. Was not feeling that bro. I like the fit for Toronto, but the uh the fit was was not it. <laughs> Definitely not it. Um, got to touch on as well. Cam Whitmore, who was projected to go, I've seen a lot of max, a lot of mocks, um, top four, top five to you know Houston or Detroit. Uh, and then I don't think I really saw him in mocks outside of the top seven or eight picks. He manages to fall all the way to pick twenty. So the Rockets, I think, come away with, in terms of total haul. Obviously, Victor is the steal of – not even the steal, but, like, that's the pick of the night, right? But right. in terms of what they were able to get and not even having to make a trade to get Whitmore again at 20, like, just fell back into their lap, uh, that might turn out to be one of the steals of this draft. This seemed to almost every draft, you know, analyzer, guys that do, you know, huge prospect analysis and build out the big boards. Cam Whitmore was a solid, solidified top 10 pick, top five pick in a lot of people's eyes. So to get mm-hmm. him well outside of the lottery, a pick 20, a um, couple of years, we're gonna be, people are going to be looking back on this like, how? How did they allow this to happen? Right. There's so many teams here where you have him on the board that could have used somebody that fits him, fits his type of archetype, right? 6'7", super athletic, um, projects to be a pretty decent shooter already and can only you know probably get better from there. Um and just got passed up on over and over and over. When I saw the Warriors were up at pick 19, I was like, well, look, oh, shoot, they're going to luck out again and get one more. <laughs> and they end up taking um, AirPods, what a lot of people call them. I always forget how to pronounce his last name, but Shungar from Santa Clara um, can definitely shoot the ball. So it makes a lot of sense there in their system. But the Rockets end up lucking out there at pick 20 and get their guy again in Cam Whitmore, who they just keep adding to this really young core. So I'm excited to watch the Rockets this upcoming year. Um, and like I said, my what I thought was going to be my sale of the draft was Leonard Miller, who I thought was good enough from what I've seen from him to be a lottery pick. And he ends up falling out of the first round entirely and goes in the third pick of the third round to the Minnesota Timberwolves. And I really, really, really like that fit a lot. I think it's good to have guys like Anthony Edwards around him um obviously cat and gobert as well i think he'll be a really nice complimentary piece um for that team early um but again just with his length like 6 10 2 11 has a small forward um his his skill set on the offensive side of the ball he's shown flashes of self-creation like i had mentioned before um i just really like that fit i think he'll slot in really nicely there um with the timberwolves and then you know who knows could potentially give them um a little bit of a backup plan if they do move off of cat or they can potentially have, um, you know, a lineup where they put uh, Vanderbilt and uh, – or not Vanderbilt, McDaniels. Ooh, I got the mm. two of them mixed up. Yeah, Jalen McDaniels and Leonard Miller on the court at the same time and then Rungo Bear at the five. And you still don't really sacrifice much length. Anything. You have a 6'9", 6'9", yeah. small forward, 6'10", four, and then a 7'1", seven, you know, seven, center, and Rudy Gobert. Um, so I like that a lot. I think that – They'll, and again, doesn't have to rush him on any timeline. Like he'll be able to come in and, and kind of develop at his own pace. So, um, look, we can come back to it at some point. You know, two years from now, when, when Leonard Miller is Hooper is hooping, you all know that I tried to tell y'all first that he was. A I was about to say. Draft, so you say you could always say you called it out. If he turns out to be, if he ends up being someone really, really good, you could always say you called it. Yeah. So, look, we'll, you'll, y'all see this. We all see this TikTok in what 2025, 2026. <laughs> Just know I said it first. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, now that the draft is over, um, it means two things. It means we're going to be getting ready for summer league, but free agency is about to hit full swing, full swing. And with all of that, teams are starting to make their decisions on what they're going to look like moving forward, what decision they're going to make. Obviously, with 
the Bradley Beal trade, the Wizards had kind of already tipped their hand that they were going into a full rebuild. Mm-hmm. And they they didn't just press the button. They slammed it. Man. Out of nowhere, Chris Stapps Porzingis is a Boston Celtic. Um, that is a, a honestly unexpected trade. I don't think I really saw that one coming, to be honest with you. I like the fit a lot for Boston, obviously being a team that lives and dies by the three. Why not get a seven-foot-three guy who can space the floor and knock down threes at a very, very high clip? Mm -hmm. Um, And you're able to still keep, uh, you know, Robert Williams in this deal. Um, And so I I really like that. You could run both of them on the court at the same time. Spacing is not going to be an issue there. Gives you options to potentially stagger their minutes too, if you would like. Because we know we've seen Robert Williams come come down with some injuries here in the past two seasons, so um, that may additionally help out as well. But yeah, what are your thoughts about this initial trade? Um, obviously, with Chris Porzingis now going to Boston, um, and, and them continuing to try to to build this core out around both the Jays and, and hopefully try to get back to the finals. I personally love this pit, this uh this trade. Um, mm-hmm. if I'm a Celtics fan, I'm I'm really really happy. Like you said, I think Porzingis is a great fit with them. I think, like you said, it plays into their we're gonna shoot a lot of threes mentality, but it also gives them versatility as a big man, someone who could, mm-hmm. if need be, he can score in the post a little bit. He can hit those mid range shots. You can go up against the Miami Heat in that zone. You got somebody who can sit in that middle and actually create yeah. for himself. So. Um, like I said, still he can give you a good offense and then still be a great rim protector. You can run both of them, him and Robert Williams, and then no one scoring in the paint. The paint would be on lock. But still, he, he's just a very versatile big man, and I, I like that fit for them a lot. If they want to go, not even if they want to go five out, they could play him at the five, and then they could run a, a lineup of all shooters like they do with Al Horford. So it helps them in that aspect. Al Horford's getting a little bit older, so it helps them with that. I just think it's. It makes them a lot more like Brass even said they wanted to be more balanced. They wanted to have a more of a balanced roster. And I think that's exactly what they did. Um, and I like it because of the position they're in. I like it because to go to the finals, you're gonna have to go against who? Joel Embiid and the 76ers. You're gonna go have to go against Giannis and the Bucks. If you make it to the finals, if you go against the Nuggets, you have more big man depth. If you go against I don't know, the Lakers with Anthony Davis, just people the the league has a lot of great big men. So I feel like this helps them out a lot in that aspect. And listen, I don't know if I don't know if this is considered somewhat of a hot take. I think they're the best team on paper in the league. I think they're better. Mm. Than Nuggets. Wow. I, on paper, on, I'm just saying. I think they're better than Nuggets because okay. the Nuggets are going to lose Bruce Brown. Mm-hmm. That he's going to go. He's going to go get a bag somewhere. I think they didn't lose much. De- like they lost Marcus Smart, obviously. Who's who is a big loss? But you have Derek White who can fill in. You have Derek White who yeah. can play a lim- elite perimeter defense. You have more big man versatility. If Brogdon can stay healthy, now obviously health is a concern. So if Brogdon can stay healthy and Porzingis can stay healthy, then you know I feel like that they're the best team on paper. But there's a lot of things that factor into it. I'm not saying they're going to win the title, but there's, obviously there's a lot of things that factor into it. Health is one of those things. Just overall fit in general, because on paper a lot of things could look great, and then once you get into the season, you get yep. to the playoffs and things could look completely different. So I'm not saying they're going to win the, the the title. But me personally, I think on paper that they're the best team in the league. Interesting. Interesting. I like to fit a lot. I don't know if I can go that far and say I think they're the, the best on paper. But I, all the things that you said in terms of his ability to bring additional versatility and balance to their offense, another guy who um, can space the floor, but also a guy who can create his own shot different ways, big enough but still skilled enough to take bigs off the dribble, like you said, can score out of the post. I also think he's an underrated shot blocker, obviously, at his size. Um, is, a, is a good rim protector, not necessarily the greatest post defender, um, but in terms of just strictly erasing shots at the rim, um, one of the better players in the league for that. So, yeah, I think it provides another versatile asset on their offensive side of the ball. Still would love to see them bring in a more traditional point guard, um, but – I think it it definitely improves their roster. Um, the, the full details of the trade I haven't pulled up here. Obviously, again, like we said, the Celtics getting Porzingis. They also got the number 25 pick in this year's draft, um, which 
I don't remember who they took off the top of my head. I think they took – That was crazy, too, the fact that they got two first-round picks and Przingis. Yeah, they took uh, Marcus Sasser um, from Houston, um, scrappy point guard. So, fits the bill for them. And they got another first-round pick, which is crazy, right? Like, they got Porzingis and got two firsts out of it, which is insane. Obviously, both coming from the Grizzlies in this deal, a three-team deal, because the Grizzlies do get – Marcus <clears throat> Smart, the heart and soul of the Boston Celtics team. Um, he actually, I didn't know this, I think him and Bede and Jokic were still the only teams from that draft class, or the only players from that year's draft class that were still with the team that drafted them. Obviously, Jokic and Embiid for obvious reasons, but um, Marcus Smart, then with the Celtics for, was that almost eight, nine years at that point? Um, yeah. So, Tough. I know for Celtics fans to see Marcus Smart go, he was one of the most loved players on that roster. Um, but he now goes into a Grizzlies team who, at the beginning of – or not even at the beginning, at the end of their season in the playoffs, that they would not be bringing Dylan Brooks back under any circumstances. Uh, so bringing a guy who um, can kind of fill that void in terms of perimeter defense, you know, former defensive player of the year. I think his defense definitely took a step back this year. Um, mm -hmm. was not the best defender on his team this season, arguably might not have even been a top two or three defender on the Celtics this past season. Not to say that he's, you know, a bad defender by any means. Still is a very good defender in this league. Um, and could see him, you know, re-elevate that level of play there um, in Memphis. I'm, I'm a little interested with the fit there with um, when Ja gets out of that 25-game suspension with Ja and Desmond Bain and Marcus Smart. Um, all playing at the same time. You're giving up a lot of size That's there. Small. But we do know Marcus Smart, man, he tries to guard centers. He does not he shy does. away from <laughs> any contact, any size. It does not matter to him. So um, they may just be banking on his his heart and his scrappiness to, to kind of fill some of those gaps there. Um, but even that aside, this gives him a point guard for that first 25-game stretch of the season. Um, and then obviously once Ja does come back, then, you know, they'll probably do some mix, mix and matching, uh, maybe stagger their minutes potentially, but I'm pretty sure all three of them will start. They'll just, they'll figure it out. Um, yeah. and then on the wizard side of things, obviously after giving up Porzingis, they do get back Tyus Jones, um, from the Grizz Grizzlies, which I really like Tyus Jones is, has been the best backup point guard in the league for two, three seasons now has an absurd assist to turnover ratio just makes right decisions with the basketball all the time. Very smart player, um, which is all you can ask for from like, if that is what you're getting out of your starting point guard, that is a win, right? You have a point guard that makes good decisions. He doesn't turn the ball over, gets his guys going and can still score when needed to. Um, so he's now going to move into a position where he can be a starting point guard in the league and really, you know, kind of spread his wings and show the league what he can really do with, you know, 30, 35 minutes a night. They get Danilo Gallinari from the Celtics, who didn't even get to play a single minute, I think, in a Celtics uniform, which is tough because I think he grew up a Celtics fan and it was like a Dang. lifelong dream for him to finally be a Boston Celtic. Dang. Tears his ACL before the season starts, doesn't ever get to play, and then gets traded. Um, <laughs> very it's tough business. for him. Yeah, <laughs> very, very tough. Uh, Mike Muscala also going to the Wizards in this trade as well, um, and then a second-round pick from the Celtics. So – Definitely, I think Celtics is a great deal. Grizzlies is a great – really, honestly, is a great deal, I think, for everyone involved. Obviously, if you're the Wizards, weird that you trade the best player in this deal and don't get a first-round pick back when the Celtics get the best player and two first-round picks. Yeah. Um, so if I had to pick, obviously, they would be the winners. Just you get the best player and the draft capital. It's kind of crazy. Um, but – I like this for everybody involved, right? It makes sense for everyone here. The Celtics get the versatility and the big. Um, Grizzlies get a gritty guy. Going back to those grit and grind days, someone that fits their mentality, um, gives them additional point guard help while Ja suspended, and then additional uh, help on the perimeter on the defensive side of the ball with Dylan Brooks being out. And the Wizards um, get a point guard to help them launch off their rebuild um, who can help give that offense some structure and not just let Jordan Poole dribble the ball like crazy for 20 seconds and chuck a 35 foot three. So, um, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I really like this for everybody involved. 
Yeah. Um, for the Grizzlies side of it, I already talked about how I feel about the Celtics side of it. For the Grizzlies side of it, um, I think it helps them too off the court because I feel like they need a little bit more leadership in that locker room. I feel like that team is a little is very not a little bit. They're very they were very immature. They obviously with the Josh stuff, obviously I just feel like the whole team, the whole culture in general, mm-hmm. can use a grown up in there, can use a veteran, can use a leader and someone who's been in the playoffs, someone who's been deep in the playoffs multiple times, someone who's played alongside stars so he can work with the egos. Someone who's been to the finals, even though he hasn't won, he's been to the finals. So I feel like off the court, um, it's a really big, really big help. And I probably, I feel like he'll be uh, have a great impact on those young guys there on the court. Yeah, I, I'm a little, con- I'm a little concerned about how they would all fit together once Ja comes back, because you know, like you said, those are three small guys and Bain, Ja, mm-hmm. and Marcus Smart. Yeah, he can, he plays bigger than what he is, but at the end of the day, he's still what is he six five ish. Marcus Smart, like I don't know. Marcus Smart, no, he's like, tall. I know, he's like six. Marcus Smart's like what six three, six four. Not think Marcus about it. Smart is basketball reference at Marcus Smart six three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, six three. So I mean, that's a bit, if he's they're all starting together. That's a very very small team or small perimeter. But I mean, who knows? They can make it work, and then we'll see. But from the Wizards side of it, it's just a little bit tough because a Porzingis had a player option, so you could have just opted out. You could have lost him for nothing so you're right. kind of stuck the fact that you even got anything i guess you can look at it as a win mm-hmm. like i understand you didn't get any first round picks but your your hands were kind of tied so but as far as the wizards i'm actually um i'm curious to see what this new regime does because uh all these moves are didn't they get i believe they got like a new gm and yeah. all these moves are under this new gm and the first thing he's doing is completely erasing all of the mistakes of the previous <laughs> uh, the yeah. previous regime over there so from that aspect, I'm excited to see what their future looks like because, like you said, he's just – he didn't really have a lot to work with. You got Bradley Bill with a no-trade clause and a terrible contract. You got Przingis with a player option. You got Kuzma with a player option. So the fact that you got anything from those guys, I guess you could look at it as a win. And they did get a lot of second-round picks through this whole process. They got, like, <laughs> what was like six second-round picks yep. and, like, and, like, some swaps. Like, they, they got a lot of stuff for having basically no leverage in any mm-hmm. of these deals that they made. So um, from that aspect, I'm excited to see them starting their rebuild. I'm excited to see them seem like they're, they seem like they're finally going to be a serious organization for once with this new regime. So I'm, I'm excited to see what the future holds. Yeah, I think Will Dawkins is the new new general manager there in uh, Washington. And he got permission from the, the owner and the team president to like, the green light to do whatever he wants. If he wants to start the rebuild, start the rebuild. And he very, very quickly, I think he got the job in the beginning of June and <laughs> we're about almost to the end of the month and he's blown it up entirely, which is mm-hmm. the right thing to do. The wizards have been living in that middle ground for ever since John Wall left. They've been living in that, that middle ground area, which is not where you want to be as a franchise. So I like the decision to trade away Bill and Porzingis, and just fully, fully go young. Um, we got to bring up this trade almost didn't happen, right? Like it started oh, with yeah. what had been reported by Shams and Woj and, um, you know, multiple media sources that it was going to be a three-team deal um, with the, the Wizards, the Celtics, and the Clippers were actually going to get Brogdon in this deal. Um, and so Boston was going to be able to keep Marcus Smart and still bring in Porzingis. The Clippers, I think, ended up backing out because of some medical questions with Brogdon. Um, they are concerned about his current injury status, and that you know gave them some hesitancy. And so they back out of the deal. And the, the Wizards were up against the clock, like you said, with Porzingis' player option. That had to be opted in by midnight that day, or he mm-hmm. becomes a free agent. And so they were on a very, very tight window to get it done. And they got it done with, I think, like 10 or 15 minutes to spare before midnight Eastern time. Um, which I'm sure was a very, very tough decision for them to have to include Marcus Smart at that point. But I believe they had to just to make the money work from that point because Providence's contract no longer would have been on the table to be moved. So um, hard, to, hard to see a guy like that go, I know, for the, the Celtics fan base. But um, like I said, I really like this move for, for everyone involved. Um, going to another move that the, uh, the Wizards made, after bringing in Chris Paul as part of the Bradley Beal trade, essentially they turn this into a three-team deal. And Chris Paul, so crazy, 
is a Golden State Warrior, and Jordan Poole is on the Washington Wizards. I know we said uh, immediately after they got eliminated, we kind of talked about, you know, where their offseason projects. It felt like either Jordan Poole or Draymond Green was going to have to go. Just from, uh, not even like the culture stuff. Yes. But even if you remove that, the two of them having big contracts in addition to Steph and then you haven't have to re-sign Clay, like it just would have been a mess to try to deal with. You know, Jordan Poole has a really bad postseason. It something just seemed like it had to give. And after Draymond opts out of his contract, they make the decision to trade away Jordan Poole, bring back a veteran guy and Chris Paul. Um, it looks like are planning to re-sign Draymond Green. They came out and specifically said they have no intention on looking to to waive or trade Chris Paul. They are looking to keep him on the roster and contend for a title this year. They asked Steve Kerr about it. Steve Kerr said the biggest point is that we as an organization sensed we needed a shift. They didn't mean we needed an overhaul, but we needed a shift of some sort. I think everybody in the organization sensed that. And it feels like we've made a pretty significant shift without giving up our identity and our sense of who we are as a team. I think all in all, it's a very positive shift, which I'm going on a mini rant. <laughs> to me, thing, brother. to me, it's crazy to say because Jordan Poole, the, the, the Warriors literally do not win the, the title in 2022 <clears throat> without Jordan Poole. He's a very, very key player in that series. Key player in that entire playoff run. So much so that you then went to sign him to a four-year, $123 million contract extension. So between then and now, equivalent value is Chris Paul. It just, there's just no way. There's no way. I think anybody who has watched Jordan Poole play, has watched the Warriors play, who has the context on their situation, obviously knowing what happened between him and Draymond in the offseason, no one thinks Jordan Poole is that bad of a player. Right. People have down years. People have down series. He had two down series. <laughs> Granted, they looked really bad. He was basically unplayable for them in that King series and definitely unplayable in the Lakers series. I don't think he's a bad basketball player. He's still young, right? Guy was in the G League still. It's only been like two seasons removed from that happening. Um, so to trade him away, A, I think this is like completely marked the end of this double time. I don't want to hear nothing about this double timeline for the Warriors ever again. It's over. Yeah, no, that's done. That's completely done. Over. They completely ruined it. Like, you have Wiseman, Kaminga, Jordan Poole, Moses Moody. Moses Moody is the last man standing. Yeah. Because Jordan, the reports are saying Kaminga is going to get moved too. At this point, there's no point keeping him, right? You already have gone so old with what you're doing, bringing in Chris Paul. Just, just try to win now. Your best bet is to move Kaminga to somebody that you can get more veterans who can play for you right now. Because 100%. what we saw last year, Kaminga can't play in the playoffs, according to Steve Kerr. He couldn't get minutes. Wasn't ready. Right. So to say that you feel like you needed a shift – that means that you really did not do a good job of nurturing that part of the timeline. I'm not saying it's the easiest thing to do. It's very difficult, but that's also something that's very rare. Very rare do you have a team that can win a championship and also at the same time teams around the league are like, man, look at the young pieces that they have. In a couple of years, we'll have to worry about a core of Jordan Poole and James Wiseman and Moses Moody, and Jonathan Kaminga. That could be something serious. Y'all had that with Steph, Clay, and Dre on the team, and Wiggins all at the same time. We completely botched it. Terribly botched it. <laughs> completely botched it. It's, it's insane. 
But honestly, um, I just want to take a second. I'm really happy for Chris Paul, Brian. I love seeing people beat their addictions. He was addicted to being in the finals, and <laughs> he beat that. He beat that addiction. So I'm happy for Chris Paul because they're not doing anything. They're not. This doesn't move the needle. This isn't a move that gets them over the hump. They weren't even. They're. I don't. They were a second round exit team that had no way of really getting a lot better, and they're not close. Like, they lost easily to the team that got swept by the champion. So, it's like, you're not even close. Like, you're you're nowhere. You're not close. You don't have guys that's going to get better because you traded them away. You're going to trade away Kaminga. So, it's not like you're going to have guys that are like, like, like the Kings, right? We talked about the Kings. They lost in the first round. But we, me and you can both agree that they're going to get better. They're going to get more experience. Like, they can right. move on further. The Warriors are a bunch of old guys that are on the decline besides Steph. Steph seems like he's playing the best basketball of his career, but mm -hmm. Draymond's on decline. Clay's on Clay's looks. He, he doesn't look like he could be a number two in the championship team anymore. Clay's on the decline. You got Wiggins who he's still a, a good player, but he's just going to stay where he's at. You know what I mean? He's not going to improve. He's not going to decline. He's just going to stay where he's at. And then you trade away your young guys for Chris Paul, who one, you're getting older. You need, their problem in the playoffs was you guys were small. You guys were too small. You gotten older, you gotten smaller. smaller. And then yeah. you've gotten slower when you're a fast paced team. How does yeah. that make sense? The only thing that makes sense is him coming off the bench and he can help out in the minutes that Curry's on the bench. Okay, that's fine. You're still gonna lose the game. It does not matter to me. Like this move, uh, it's just it doesn't it doesn't move me. It doesn't move me. I'm not gonna say they got a lot worse because like you said, Jordan Poole was unplayable. So I'm not saying that they got like way worse, but it just doesn't make them way better. It doesn't make them a championship level team. I don't mm -hmm. see them competing. And to to talk about what you said about how they had the, the dynasty, the old dynasty, and then they had the young players and had that that timeline the same basically. Do you feel like that can't work or that they just ruined that so bad? I think they genuinely messed it up. So I think it can be done. Like, there's Have we no... seen that before? Let me think, because I'm trying to think of any ways that, like, we've seen, like, teams that really were competing for championships also kind of, like, put together a young core at the same time. I can't – I definitely can't think of any example that was as drawn out and talked about as this one because it was mm -hmm. so – and it was just such a rare circumstance where you have a team that in 2019 makes the finals, would probably win the finals if Kevin Durant doesn't tear his Achilles and Clay Thompson doesn't tear his ACL. Right. Those two, bad injuries happen, right? They lose the finals. KD leaves. Clay is then out for two years because he also tear his, tears his Achilles on top of the ACL. Steph, when he broke his hand or his wrist, right? Mm -hmm. so they had the year where it was Draymond and a bunch of the young guys, and they were absolutely awful. They get in the lottery. They take Wiseman. The next year, they have another lottery pick. They take Kaminga. They take Moody. And it's like you still had – you had Jordan Poole already at that point. It's like out of nowhere, you get Clay back. Now you have Wiggins, Draymond is back, Steph is healthy. You put your core back together, but you just basically like had like two out of nowhere rebuilding seasons to get great talent. And I think Kaminga is a good pick. I think Moses Moody is a good pick. Jordan Poole, you know, developed phenomenally in the G League and kind of had his splash on the scene moment. I don't think Wiseman ever got that opportunity really in Golden State, like, so, to me, the opportunities for development outside of what Jordan Poole did has not really come to fruition. Like, James Wiseman never got great opportunities. at, And part of it, again, was just like you drafted a center like him who you knew was a project and who you knew needs post touches and, you know, just has to have the ball in his hands to be effective. That's not how you run your offense. So when is he right. ever going to get that time to develop? Exactly. And so then when it doesn't pan out, you traded him to the Pistons and got back Gary Payton, who was on the roster last you were, year. Who you let go. <laughs> right. So <laughs> you didn't want to – didn't think you could afford him, couldn't pay him, but then trade back for him. So that was like – you literally just gave him away. 
Mm-hmm. If Wiseman pans out to be any type of decent, that's so- if he pans out to be decent, it's bad. If he pans out to be bad, it's still bad because you drafted him number two. There's no mm-hmm. it's a lose lose situation for Golden State. Exactly. On top of that, Kaminga, who has had flashes in the past of just being a very productive player for them, when he's been on the court in games, he's had flashes of great defense, great cutting, good shooting. Just his athleticism pops when you watch them play. And he's getting – Iguodala's in his ear. Draymond is in his ear. He can just continue to develop and be coaches, give him the minutes. He's going to make mistakes, right? It's what the regular season is for, right? You are a championship-level team. You can go through the West. You know it's a gauntlet. You've done it four times already. So you can definitely do both at the same time. But when you draft a center that doesn't fit and you don't give him minutes, that's a problem. When you have Kaminga and you're not giving him as much development as he needs and he's getting frustrated with his playing time and now it's rumor that he's about to be on the move too, that's a problem, especially when Iguodala is now retired, Draymond is getting older. Like he could have fit into those roles very nicely in a couple of years. Jordan Poole gets punched in the face by Draymond Green. Draymond doesn't get suspended. He has a a horrible playoff run, regression from how he played the year prior after you just gave him 120 mil, and now you just traded him for Chris Paul. So Kaminga gets moved. It's really just Moses Moody that that is left in Golden State after this double timeline. You just cash in it. I don't even – you didn't even cash in on the second timeline. Because like I just said, they turned James Wiseman and Jordan Poole into Gary Payton II and Chris Paul. That's not even a cash-in. That's so bad when you look at it from that aspect. That's so bad. (laughs) That's Bro, that's not even a cash-in. Unless they're able to turn Kaminga into, like, two quality vets, like – you even then, like even then, if you don't away. win the championship, if you don't win the championship, then what what are those vets bringing you? So it's this not going to matter a, regardless. Like this is a lose, almost guaranteeing to be a lose lose situation because, like you said, I don't think this is a championship team with Chris Paul. Absolutely not. I think Chris Paul is still a very capable NBA player, but like you <laughs> said, Golden State is one of the most fast paced. They play chaotic basketball. Chris Paul is one of the slowest paced, methodical players we've ever seen, especially in today's game. That's a clash. Chris they barely Paul, run pick and roll. It doesn't. It just doesn't. It doesn't fit. It, it right. really just doesn't fit. That's I'm very I, interested to see how they're going to run him together, and if they do this small ball lineup with Chris Paul, Steph, Clay, oh Wiggins, God. and Draymond, who's That's rebounding? Food. Who's who's guarding the rim? That's food. Oh my who's God. guarding the perimeter? I'm gonna say who's guarding the ball. <laughs> They're getting to- bro. If I see bro, Chris Paul and Curry and Clay at this Clay's not a great defender at this point. Yeah. The only defend oh the best defender they got is Wiggins, and he's one of the tallest guys in that lineup. So you can't just put him on ball. Is he bro, taller is- than Draymond? Wiggins is like six eight. Draymond, yeah. <laughs> Draymond's six yeah. seven. Draymond's like six seven, bro. That's Stop it, bro. They cannot run that lineup. And that's why I don't get it from Chris Paul's point. Like, all right, let's talk about he Chris Paul for a second. Right. This guy, he wants to win a ring, but you know, you're not gonna start. And if you do start that outside that lineup is getting torched. Like they're not gonna guard anybody. They're getting it's mismatches literally everywhere. Yep. You, he's not gonna start. You can come off the bench. Okay, you're gonna give good minutes. You can't close games because closing games is gonna be Steph, obviously. It's gonna be Wiggins, it's gonna be Draymond, it's gonna be Clay. And then it's going to be that small ball line that you're talking about. You're going to get torched. So, you're like, you're not going to start. You're not going to close games. So, like, even if you win a ring, because people are going to look at it like, okay, you won a ring as, like, a a role, like a backup center. Like, you didn't really have a huge – you can have an impact, but you're not going to have this same impact as if you were to win a ring in Phoenix or the Rockets. Like, it's not going to be the same. So, mm-hmm. it's like, I just feel like, I don't know how much say so he had into this. I know he just wanted to go to contender. I didn't really hear anything about like he wanted to go to the Warriors, but if he could have chose where he wanted to go, I think the Warriors were were a bad pick. I feel like there's plenty of other places that he could have went for less money, definitely less money, but there's other places that he could have went where he could have 
actually competed for a championship and even had a bigger impact. So, Boston. Boston. I know the Clippers are super injury prone, but I mean, the Clippers even, like, I just feel like the Warriors, that 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 wasn't the pick. That was not that was not the right team for Chris Paul. I think I've already reached a point where uh, I pretty much just think he's not going to win a ring in his career. It's like, if yeah. it happens, it's great. If it doesn't, like, it's not going to sway what I think about Chris Paul. So, to that point, like, like you said, I just – I don't think it makes him a contender. I think there's still question marks with this roster. And, it, like, it doesn't even have to get more complicated than this. The reigning champion of the NBA is a team that is engine behind a legitimate seven-foot center. Right now, outside of Kevon Looney, your next tallest player is Andrew Wiggins. Y'all are not equipped to beat who just won the title last year. We don't even need to get into any of the other bigs that you might. Let's say you managed to beat Denver. There's multiple teams out east. The Bucks have Giannis. The Celtics now have KP and Jason Tatum. The, the Sixers have Embiid. There's a lot of size that you are going to face, even if by some miraculous run you're able to beat Denver next year. There's size in the league, and they are not equipped to deal with that. And I, I think I said this a couple episodes ago. People have started to get critical of Steve Kerr saying that his number one big adjustment is just put Draymond at the five. Let's go small. <laughs> that can't be the adjustment every time. It's not, it's, that, not, it's not the same NBA, bro. It's not the same than when y'all could have did that years ago. It's not the same. Bigs NBA. are a lot more versatile than they were when you when you had Bogut as your five. And like, yeah. Out of nowhere, Draymond's at the five, and you're sitting here torching guys like Demonis Mani Yunus in the playoffs, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, it's not the same, bro. It's not the same. People are much more equipped to stop small ball lineups because a lot of teams tried to emulate what you did for better or for worse. So mm-hmm. teams got hit to having to stop these kind of lineups on a night in, night out basis. So I'm interested to see what they do to fill out their roster, but as it stands right now, this does not really – if anything, from an unbiased perspective, I think Jordan Poole just keeping it makes more sense. I think it does as well. Makes I a ton just, more sense. I can't wait to watch him, what he do with the Wizards. I really – like, bro, I be joking about, bro, he's about to average 30. I genuinely, like, really think he's about to average, like, 27 points per game like i think he's like i think he's he's gonna have the green light and they the biggest thing they don't want to win so like they don't (laughs) care if you go out there and chug he's really bro the highlights i'm telling you right now his like end of season highlights are gonna look like prime Kyrie Irving. like he's gonna look ridiculous like he's gonna go off i can't wait they're gonna lose every game and i'm gonna just watch him go crazy he's gonna play the warriors and he's gonna give them 50 (laughs) he's they might lose by 20 they're, yeah, he's, he's, giving them, he's giving him fifty. He's bro. He's taking thirty shots, bro. I, I can't wait. That's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. Yeah. You I need saw, at least a couple of them teams like that. That just they don't want to win. They go out there, have fun, bro. Just have fun. Right. I saw somebody make a tweet that was talking. I guess it's a whole like some bars and stuff in DC, and people were saying uh, this one fan went to a Wizards game and watched the whole game like start to finish, and then went to the club immediately after <laughs> we got to the club john wall was already there <laughs> he was like yo how he beat me to the club it was like jordan pool about to put up wilt numbers <laughs> <downtown DC. laughs> bro that's funny man he got his whole team now he can say he's the man on the team nah he's about to go off bro. He is, like, he he's is about to go down, off bro player on the Wizards right now. my man's about to make the all-star team <laughs> he's he about to go off bro that's too funny but, uh, yeah, and it's it's so weird. Like, even seeing Chris Paul in a Warriors jersey is like, that don't yeah. look right. And then we kind get of, to see. Uh, what, like, aren't they, like, kind of rivals? Yeah, like the whole, that whole clip with Steph Steve and Kerr. Clip. And it's like, they beat you when you were on the Clippers. They beat you when you were on the Rockets. They, like. I wouldn't honestly if I'm Chris Paul, I'm not going to the Warriors, bro. That's any other team but the Warriors, bro. I'm not backing up Steph. That was like your rival for years. I'm not backing up Steph, bro. I'm sorry. I don't the know. Warriors were a big reason why the Lob City Clippers era ended. 
They just it, couldn't like, compete. That was the reason why that that ended. That was the reason why you never won a, a ring with probably the best team you had with the Rockets. Yep. Like he stopped. He they're the reason you are in this position right now that you don't have a ring. Yeah, and you're gonna be like, you know what? I'm gonna join them. But you join them when they're at their worst point. Like, come on, bro. I don't know. I, I feel bad for Chris a little bit. I'm not even gonna lie. And the fact that the internet basically be bullying him. Like the internet treat Chris Paul like they they treat Chris Paul like he's some bum. Like that's crazy. Yeah, the slander is the slander is too crazy, too crazy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, questions about the fit there for sure. Um, they got a lot of work to still do with that roster. Um, also, as I'm looking at this, I see the the headline here: Lonzo Ball is not expected to play this year, which is that's sad, man. That's gonna be two years out of basketball for Lonzo. Yeah. I don't know. That's what two and a half because he last played in the beginning of 2022, it was like January 2022. So he'll have missed the back part of that season, all of last year, and all of next year. That's sad, uh, man. From a, 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 a good player who's improved, like a very, very valuable player, great defender, he great shooter at this point, great player. Mm-hmm. Like, bro, Lonzo, Lonzo was a good, like a really, really good player, really solid NBA player, bro. That's, it's sad to see, man. It's really sad to see. He found his role. Like, I think, obviously, being as crazy hyped up as he was, being the first role brother to get to the league and all the social media buzz and stuff, like, he really got there. Obviously, he had the stint with the Lakers. When he got to the Pelicans, you really started to see him, like, figure out where he fit in the NBA. Like, mm-hmm. playmaker, great on-ball defender, like, that was his niche. Like, and to see how this is all played out off of a meniscus tear is just not – I got questions about the surgeons at this point. Because to me, like, I tore my meniscus, right? I'm not a I'm not a basketball player. I was playing football. So, it's obviously not the same degrees. Like, I don't do the same type of jumping. But to tear it – Right, and then when that video came out of him running on a treadmill, you see that, like, limp in his leg is like, bro, something ain't right in there. So they go yeah. back and do another surgery. And then after the second surgery, something still isn't right. And so they have a, now a third surgery um, to do a cartilage transplant, which is, like, even more, like, now we're getting to, like, experimental-type surgery, um, not standard, like, you know, you tore a ligament, we're going to repair it, cut it, whatever. Like, these are like last ditch kind of efforts to salvage his career, which, like you said, is really sad um, because it really had gotten to this point where I said, I think he really found his fit and his role in the NBA when the, he was playing with the Bulls. That was a very good team. You see just the drop up that the Bulls have had since he's been injured. Like, yeah. I don't think anybody thought with DeMar DeRozan being there, they were going to be as good as they were. But a lot of that was credit to Lonzo Ball and how he was able to impact them um, on both sides of the ball. And since he's been gone, like, it's been nonstop. The Bulls need to blow it up. Because <laughs> Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan, and Vucevic is not it. No. Like, Lonzo Ball was the missing piece for that roster. And so I, I hope that this last surgery can get it right and he can take the season off and hopefully come back in crazy 2024 and, That's tough, man. and play again. But, yeah, it's just got, it's really unfortunate. I always rock with Lonzo, man. You know, Lakers, you know, I always – me and Lonzo go way back, man. That's that summer league in 2017 – was it 2017? Man. He was hooping, man. Lonzo, probably, Lonzo was different. And yeah, Lonzo's always been my example, too, that when guys don't develop jump shots, I bet, bro, look at Lonzo, bro. He shot from the left side, from the left shoulder and changed it. And it's like a 40, like, what do you shoot? Like 40% from three or something like that. Yeah. Like, you can develop a shot, bro. I'm, every time I see an NBA, NBA player that can't shoot, bro, I'm like, bro, look at Lonzo, bro. Mm hmm. That's sad. Yeah. Can always, always fix that. And it, oh my gosh, so it's worse news after worse news. I'm looking at a different article here in the Chicago Tribune. 
Um, it says here that no NBA player has ever returned to the court after cartilage transplants. Damn. Um, it says the procedure is relatively new and designed. Oh my gosh, designed as a step down from a full knee replacement. What? Yeah, he might be done, bro. That's sad. Bro, I'm telling you, I like look, years from now, a story is gonna come out about that first surgery. Something was not done right. Because yeah, there's no be. way. There's no way, like, not to say that it's a minor injury. Like, of all the sports that you tear your meniscus in, like, basketball is probably the worst one to do it, I would imagine. Like, anything that involves a lot of jumping and stuff, because that's what – like, it's like the padding between the bones in your knee that, like, mm. land on. Like, in football, you can tear your meniscus and still play. Yeah. Just, like, finish the season and get it fixed later. Um. Basketball, like Derrick Rose, that was, I think, the second thing that he tore. He tore his ACL the first time, then he tore his meniscus. Um, so, like, definitely it has a bigger impact in this sport, but Derrick Rose is still having a solid NBA career. Like, people tear their meniscus and come back. So, for him to tear his meniscus and then now be doing a procedure that's a step down from a knee transplant, somebody did something wrong, bro. Somebody did something very, very wrong. And look, somebody about to get sued. <laughs> if I was him, somebody would be about to get sued. Facts. You think it was the shoes? Because I saw that they, they said it might have been the big baller brand shoes that led I, to all this. I don't really know, man. It's just, them shoes were, like, made very, very poorly. Um, He said it kept, like, ripping and changing them every, like, quarter. So, I mean... Mm-hmm. I don't know if that has a big impact on it. I guess I guess we'll never really know. But yeah. if it is, that's even worse. Like, that's even worse, man. Man, man, that is tough. That is tough. Um, speaking of the Bills, too, the Bills, the Bulls, too. Um, their GM came out. I think the last pick from their the Vucevic trade finally conveyed on draft night. Um, he said. Now that that's everything is done in stone, the Bulls feel like they came out on top in that in that the deal. Lucevich trade. I need to see who they all got. Like, bro, it's, it's no, it's wrong. <laughs> it's wrong, bro. Look at the look at the Magic roster right now, and look at the Bulls roster right now. Which one would you rather have? I would one hundred percent rather have the Magic roster. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> like they the Bulls they gave, GM said that. Yeah, AK. I, I mean, he know. had to say that. He Carney showed us, yeah. He can't just be like, yeah, we got fleeced. Like, yeah, no, you can't, but like <laughs> we know, bro. We know. <laughs> that's kind of delusional. Like that because I think those picks turn into uh definitely Franz Wagner was one of them. That alone is like done. Right. Done. <laughs> done but instantly right then and there. They traded Wendell Carter too, who let's be honest, the Bulls would probably rather have Wendell Carter than Vucevic right now. <laughs> Yeah, Vucevic, Vucevic and Aiton to me is in that same, but Vucevic Vuce even worse. I'm not a fan of Vuce. I'm, I'm, I'm not either. And so, yeah, it's, look, tough for that whole organization all around right now. Listen, man, they sold they soul in the 90s. It's they, you got to, listen, it comes <laughs> gotta, at a cost, You got to pay that penance. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It comes at a cost, brother. Oh, man. That's uh really funny. Mavericks also made some moves on draft night as well. Um, trading away Bertans and the number 10 pick to the Thunder um, for the number 12 overall pick. And even bigger to me, um, traded for Rashawn Holmes and the number 24 overall pick. Um, so they get an additional big there because um, their center spot has been in a very weird position for the for last few seasons. I kind of thought Dwight Powell would come out of all of that and be the guy, but doesn't seem like he's been the solution for them there. Um, Christian Wood, we already know, has had his ups and downs in, in Dallas. Um, and Rashawn Holmes, who has some good seasons in Sacramento, um, really kind of fallen out of their rotation there entirely. But, um, you know, seeing what he's been able to do, um, you know, when given the minutes, um, his best season, I think he averaged almost a double-double. He had like 14 and nine. Um 
So interested to see what he would be able to bring to that that Mavericks roster, and hopefully they can sort out like stuff to do with that big spot because they need to get that roster solidified. Um, and additionally to all that, Mark Cuban said he's learned his lesson <laughs> with Jalen Brunson and is going to throw whatever Kyrie Irving wants on the table in an effort to try to re-sign him, which... Wait a minute. So that means you're going to give him $272 million for five years? I don't. Can they even give him that big? He hasn't made All-NBA. He's eligible for... I think he's eligible for... um. Like it's some some crazy that's the number that I've seen. It was two hundred. That's why I remember so vividly. It was two hundred and seventy two million dollars. Some crazy like that. Dang. Let me see. I'm not giving Kyrie Irving that much money for that long. No oh yeah, two seventy two over five years. I'm not giving him that, bro. I'm sorry. I'm. Not. Whoa. If he resigns with the Mavericks. They can give him a two-year, eighty-six million dollar extension, which is a lot less than he could get if he walked. Hmm. Oh, I'm not. So, I'm. I'm not giving him that, bro. I'm sorry, bro. That's too much money for too long, bro. And people like that's. If they like say you you're you're locked into that, that means you're locked into Luca and Kyrie Irving. And if you can't really find ways to improve the roster, ah, uh, is Luca gonna get pissed? Is Luca get gonna get pissed off and want to leave? You're like you're gonna be locked into Kyrie Irving, especially with this new uh this new CBA. I, I don't know, bro. I'm not doing that. I'm sorry. Not for that I, long. Like I'm not that, that five years. I'm not doing that for Kyrie Irving, bro. I love Kyrie. Kyrie is a flaker. Kyrie is very, very unreliable, and Kyrie is injury prone. I'm not doing that. Not for five years, bro. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, I still am not the biggest fan of him and Luca together because that really handcuffs your ability to build out a roster around Luca, and. Again, you traded your best defender to get Kyrie. Mm -hmm. You're lacking so much depth. We just talked about your center issues. You can't find a reliable, consistent, you know, someone at the five spot. Can't guard nobody. Can't guard a soul. Can't guard nobody, bro. So, nah. yeah, look, I – they really would have been better off if they had just done this for Brunson. Had a lot less money. If, imagine if you were paying Brunson. Brunson got a four-year, $100 million deal, and dudes thought it was an overpay then. Bro, now you're about that, to have to sign Kyrie for almost 300 M's. Bro, that would have been the biggest steal ever, bro. Oh, my God. It's ridiculous, bro. Insane, bro. Insane. Not paying Kyrie. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm stuck at that. No, that's a lot of money, bro. $272 million. That's a lot of money. These contracts are getting out of control. Like, just the they numbers don't even sound real no more. <laughs> like, they're getting three hundred million dollars, and it's like, no disrespect to these like players, but it, it's not even all going to like the top guys in the league. Like Jalen Brown's about to get like three hundred million dollars. Jalen yeah. Brown is a top twenty NBA player, twenty five ish. He's not like top five, top ten. He's not like in that. It's level just that player. much money to go around now. Bro, like you're, you're the second best player on the team is getting 300 M's. That's crazy. That is too crazy. Yeah, we're, they're approaching like is they're approaching a point where it's like baseball contract levels. But baseball contracts are like 10 years, 12 years, whatever. Like mm -hmm. Taylor Brown's going to get 300 M's over five years. Could Go, he could do back to back. The next one might be five years, 375. I don't know. Like, the money's only gonna get it's gonna go up and up and up. One of these days, you're gonna, one of these days, you're gonna see so and so, so Wimby signed for five years, 500 million dollars. <laughs> It'll be like, bro, what? Ronnie Jr. signs a six year, one billion dollar contract <laughs> extension, <laughs> bro. That's great. That is damn, that's crazy, man. That is too wild, yeah. But speaking of Kyrie Irving, I want to talk about his former running mate. Because uh, Kevin Durant 
defended his legacy yesterday in a way that I don't <laughs> think we've ever seen an NBA player defend himself. Ever hopped into a Twitter spaces and, and blew it up out of nowhere. Spaces, I think, probably had a couple thousand people, and then he joined and it jumped to about 20, 25,000 instantly. Um, Lowe went on a big rant about why he doesn't think Kevin Durant is a top five player or a top five playoff performer. Um, and someone posted the video and someone quoted the video and tagged KD in it. And let me pull up KD's tweet so I'm not misquoting anybody, but. You know KD see everything. You, so you add him on Twitter, he see it. I, I Listen. I respect it. I was about to say, I respect it, bro. I'd probably be doing the same thing, bro. All right, let's really talk about it. Like, he went to the spaces and really, was like, all right, why do you think I'm not top five? <laughs> Yo, KD is hilarious. Yeah, so. Twitter make me like KD way more. No, nah, like, I, I really do respect that the both of them, like, even just talk, like, one, I respect that Katie went to the spaces, and two, mm-hmm. I respect the fact that Lowe went up there and still was saying the same and, stuff. And like, did not back down, did not fold. I respect him for that, too, because a lot of people, no, actually, I really think you're a great player. You're right. Really, you're a top five talent. Like, nah, he really was like, no, I don't, I don't think you are top five. Bro, so I think Luca is better than you. <laughs> like, he was... <laughs> He That's really crazy. stood his ground. I respect it. Um, yeah, the, the original quote tweet was dude added Kevin Durant and said, dude got to give KD a couple pounds, which is crazy. And Kevin Durant responded to that and said, dudes who don't even come close to being good at anything be jealous of the real players. It'd be funny and sad at the same time. Damn. And then Lowe ended up responding to him at some point and said that um, basically people hold you to a different standard than the rest of the players in the league just based on their criteria. And Kevin Durant asked what that standard is, and boom, boom, bam, a space got started, and Kevin Durant joined. And it was talking for about 20, 30 minutes. The space was about an hour and a half long. Um and yeah, like I said, Lowe did not back down from his point. And I think the gist of his argument was that what people view and what people value as making you a top player or a top playoff performer almost always is going to be scoring first. <clears throat> but mm-hmm. he was very critical of his – brought up rim pressure a ton rim pressure all like i heard that statement like a hundred times but rim pressure rim pressure yeah he's critical of his his rim pressure critical of his defense critical of his playmaking and i think the core core point of his argument was people like the moves they like the bag they like the scoring and because of that he's top five but they don't take into account any other deficiencies in, uh, of his game or the fact that he just went out this year and had a really inefficient postseason, particularly that second round against Denver, um, and that that just, like, gets swept under the rug because it's KD, it's KD, right? When I look at it, we already talked about it, even when we were making our little, like, all-NBA postseason team. Like, Kevin Durant did not make that team because of that playoff series. Like, that was a really inefficient series from – that's super inefficient from KD Sanders, but even just like for the average NBA player, he had an inefficient series. Like, yeah, bro is shooting very, he shot like 20% from three. That's very bad. Very, very bad. It's very unlike Kevin Durant. Exactly. And like that series only goes six games because, yeah, him and Book combined for a ton of points. A lot of that came from KD making free throws that one game. Um, but Booker was being, like, unbelievably efficient. He's going 20 for 25. Yeah, it was ridiculous. So, like, their combined scoring output was, you know, just looking at the raw total. Okay, they put up, was it 86 points? But to get to those points, like, it was very inefficient for K- KD. And then the game that they lost, like, he looked bad. The elimination game, he I don't even think he took a three. Like, that was a rough playoff series from him. If you want to go back to like the 
series against the Celtics where they got swept when he was on the Nets. That was another very rough playoff series for him. That was the so, worst I've ever seen KD in my life. That was right. Short. Like, he just looked like they just bullied him. That was bad. There's no answer. And I don't even think – that wasn't even an efficiency problem in that series. That was – I genuinely don't think the Nets had the personnel to handle – Okay, you have KD and Kyrie. If we just throw bodies at the two of y'all, what are y'all going to do? Right. And the playmaking from Kevin Durant in that series was not good enough to punish it. Just call it what it is. It doesn't mean that he's a bad player. Just like, bro, it's not in his bag. It's not his wheelhouse. And so, you know me. I'm never one to sit here and nitpick the you were top five, but now you're like the seventh best player. Like, ah, whatever, bro. But it's interesting, A, to see just the – what the talk is from NBA fans, especially on Twitter, and how they view Kevin Durant and vice versa. Kevin Durant hopping on Twitter and engaging with a lot of these people uh, because people were pulling up tweets of uh, or receipts of people saying like KD averaging like 27 in a playoff series. And y'all are saying that's a, like, that's a bad series. Like that's a bad series. Like it's only a bad series for KD. And he was like, yeah, you see like people have different standards. That was Kevin Durant responding. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like, just looking at it, like I don't have no skin in the game here. Like I'm not a crazy KD super fan or anything like KD is still one of the best offensive players we've ever seen. But I can also say that he played a bad series against the Nuggets. Both of those things can be true. Mm -hmm. Um, So this whole interaction alone is why I think the the ranking, the top five, the constant having to compare, I think is stupid. Because like you said, why why are we even talking about rim pressure right now? That's the, that that part to me didn't make sense. Because like, Bro, I don't care how you score the basketball. You you score the basketball, you score the basketball. Like, rim pressure. Like, I don't care. Uh, sometimes I feel like, I'm going to say we, but we as in, like, NBA, like, Twitter, NBA media, whatever. Look, Complicate the game too much, bro. It's the same thing with, like, people don't think Giannis is a good offensive player because he doesn't have a bag. He can't really shoot. It's like, bro, he averages, like, he averages, like, 30 points efficiently. If you score the basketball and you do it efficiently, you're a good offensive player. You're a good scorer. I don't care how you, I don't care how you score. I don't care what it looks like. If you put the ball in the basket at a high clip, at a like an efficient rate, you're good. Like right. the, we don't need to. People complicate stuff way too much, in my opinion. Yep. And yeah, just the. The fact that these are like the context that these arguments get brought up in and like the points that you have to nitpick on to like try to formulate these arguments, it's to me, it's not worth it. Like, bro, if you don't think he's a top five player, cool. Like, I, I get from Kevin Durant's perspective, like he don't, he just wants to understand a, his biggest thing, he just want to understand what the criteria he felt like he was basing these players off of was. Mm. But it just feels like a waste of time, bro. It just feels like a waste of time because, like, you're never going to be able to change the vast majority of these people's minds, bro. You're just not. So I'm not about to just sit up here and argue why these are who I think the top five players in the NBA are. But because I have somebody fifth and you have them seventh, I'm stupid. Like, what are we really talking about here? It's not like I said that somebody who shouldn't even be a top 25 player is top five, you know? I seen a, um, like, speaking of low, I seen a, like, a TikTok recently, and he was, like, there was, he was, some guy was up there naming a top, his top 10. He put Ja at 10. And I say low screamed. He was, like, Ja, like, and he was, like, bro, like, what, like, went off on the duel. And I'm, like, bro, why is it crazy to have him 10? Like, you could disagree, but, but. but These are the dumb arguments I'm talking about. That's what, but the way he, but I'll say you this, I'll say you the clip after the way he yelled it and made it seem like, bro, like he just said, like, freaking Bogdanovich is like a top ten player, like, bro, it was, it was crazy. I'm like, bro, if you disagree, okay, that's fine. He's not an idiot for having do it for having Jot right. ten. Like, he's a good player. Like, what do you mean? So if that, he don't the, have this gun incident, he's about to make all NBA this year. And then that take is not even a hot take. He was people call him top ten, like. 
the year prior. We're like, what are we talking about? It's not like a crazy take, right? But I could, I see where Kevin Durant comes from because I do feel like with it, it always happens with lists mostly, but with top ten lists now, top ten all time lists, just list in general ranking players. Criteria changes all the time, yep. and it's okay. I, I think it's okay for other for people to have their set of criteria, mm-hmm. but I think you need to be consistent within that criteria. Like whatever your criteria is, just be consistent with it. Basically, right. so I do. I do think that, and a lot of it can be biased. A lot of be a lot can be like whether you want to admit it or not, you like certain players more than others, bro. Like when right. I make a top ten list all the time, I can admit I probably have Kobe up there. Yeah, because he's a great player, but I probably have him over this guy just because he's my favorite player ever. I can admit mm-hmm. that. A lot of people don't like to admit that their personal bias can sway their opinion a little bit. Yeah. And that that's normal. Like, it's okay to do that. You're a human. Like, you like certain players. Very right. right. Just be consistent with your criteria. That's all I'm saying. You know how many times I've tried to convince myself in my head or in arguments with people that Dirk got a case to be the greatest power forward ever. You know, I, know, <laughs> I know deep in my heart he is not, it's not even close. It's not even a discussion. Yeah. Him or Tim Duncan. It's just it's like, like Dirk was bias. my favorite player. Right? Like I, I want him to be the, the greatest power forward ever. He Brent, actually changed the game. Brandon Miller said Paul George is GOAT. That's his GOAT. That's his favorite right. player ever, bro. Like people are going to – like people are going to give the benefit of the doubt to players that they really, really like, bro. Like, it's okay. It's normal. Just be consistent with your criteria. That's all I'm saying. Like, you can have whatever list you want as long as it's consistent across everyone on that list. Simple, bro. And do not – like, the. it's no need for the the debates to get to the point that they do. Like, yeah. the fact that, like you said, job being number 10 calls you to go on a whole rant is unneeded, bro. Like, this is what first take and undisputed have done to like sports conversations. I swear, bro. Like, you Ruin can't it. have no basic conversations and just like talk and disagree. Everything is like you got to be, somebody has to be right. You have to be wrong. We're, you you're arguing over who you think the 10th best player in the NBA is. Does it matter, bro? What? Does it, does it really matter? <laughs> what? Like, bro. Yeah. It's, bro, it's just not worth it to me. It's not worth it. I really, like, it turns me away from even wanting to really, like, think about lists like that. Like, why? Like, why should I even do that? Because let, let me share it on, on TikTok or Instagram. You're going to get fried about every which way for everything, bro. It doesn't matter what you have. Bro, we could post, we could post 10 I'll get you. We can put 10 top 10 players of right now list on TikTok. Every single one of them, there are going to be people calling us stupid. Everyone with just, you just switch the order every single time. Right. And people will call you stupid no matter what because people have their personal bias, personal guys that they're like. And they just, everyone thinks they have to, you have to agree with their opinion. We can have different opinions. That's okay. And we don't got to argue. And one of us doesn't have to be an idiot about it. Like, right. one of us doesn't have to be stupid. Like, that's, I don't get it, bro. It's crazy. Yeah, I, I think first taking them definitely, definitely make talking about sports and stuff way, way more difficult than it should be. Yeah, they, like single handedly, they have changed how sports talk anywhere happens. Like even in like the barber shop, it just is not. It's not the same. Debate. It's all. It's just debates. You can't even. It's not, I shouldn't even, look, it's not even sports talk anymore. It's just debates. It's just debates. Dudes don't even be trying to have analysis on what be going on. We could be in the middle of the regular season and dudes are talking about how this affects LeBron's legacy. What are we doing here, bro? <laughs> like, what are we doing? There's so much other stuff that you could be talking about. It's a time and a place for things, too. Like, everything does – we've always said this. Everything does not have to be a debate. Like, if I say something, that doesn't mean I want to debate it. I just – like, that's just my opinion. That's how I feel. I don't have to debate everything. That part is annoying. Yeah. Do you oh, think, like, <laughs> we'll ever break out of that? No. Like, because it feels like ever since First Take really got popular, it's just there's been no looking back. No, it's not. It's only going to it's only going to get worse and worse and worse with social media. That's why I feel so bad for Wimby, too, because I feel like Wimby is like LeBron had to deal with this whole like he grew up in the 
not grew up, but like the middle of his career was when really the social media stuff started. Wimby is coming into it with social media stuff. Like we've seen takes already. Wimby's gonna be a bust. Like he's not gonna stay healthy. Wimby's gonna do this. He's not gonna do that. It's like, bro, this guy hasn't even played yet. He's already getting the whole this whole social media treatment in this and the third. So it's like with social media, with with all these sports shows, with just the way people's brains are wired to talk about sports, like you said, everything in their brain is like, how does this affect a legacy? How does this affect a bait a debate? How does this affect his ranking? Like, I think I think it's crazy the fact that Jokic wins a championship and kind of the first thing we say is like, all right, he passed this, 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 and this guy. Like he, he's now here, here, and here. It's like just enjoy the fact that he just won a championship for like just one second. Just one second. So I don't think it's gonna get no better. I think it's only gonna get worse. Worse and worse and worse and worse. And it's it's kind of sad to see. Yeah, that's a shame. All we could really hope for is that it's like the only benefit of having like social media and just the way that content is going is like you people start to build out spaces where that is not the norm. Like people could really go and talk and like fans of shows or whatever go. Y'all can just talk hoops and it's not 24 seven top 10 list legacy discussions. Pick one of these four players has to go. <laughs> it's not always something like that. Um, yeah, man. But Respect low, got the interaction. So I respect it, man. So this round, I was I just respect it for not backing down and being like, oh, I actually really love you as a player. Like I think you're a great player. Like nah, yeah. bro, really stand on that. I think Luca's better than you. I think he'll cook you. That's what I'd have said. I'd have stood on it. If I that was my take, I'd have stood on it. I'd just be like, you know what, bro? Honestly, I think a Luca would cook you straight like that, and just stand on it. Was it like so? The list was originally about playoff performers or just top five in general. So the list was based off of the ringers having their um, you know how the ringer dropped their new like list or whatever. I'm yeah. actually looking at it right now. It's Jokic, Curry, then Giannis, then KD is four, Joel Embiid is five, Luca's all the way down at seven. So his mm-hmm. whole thing was um, his whole thing is like because I've seen like I follow Lo, so I he he's low and it's funny because he's low key been a, a KD hater. So, yeah. like, this is just adds fuel to the fire. That's why you see all the people is like, oh, yeah, KD finally cooked this guy. Like, he's been hating on you forever. But his whole thing is, like, KD gets to live off of his name and resume. And that's why he keeps, even when he has bad performances, bad playoff performances, misses a lot of time through injury, that he keeps constantly being able to stay in this top five conversation, top three best player in the world conversation. When a guy like, I don't know, like, even, like, all right, we were talking strictly off injury. Like, a guy like Kawhi gets dropped out of that strictly off injury alone. Like, granted, he's been injured more, but, like, yeah, when he's playing, you know, he's a top five caliber player. Mm-hmm. And, like, Luka dropped to seven just because they didn't make the playoffs. And he's saying, like, it's not fair how KD gets to stay in this range and all the other players got to get kicked out of it. But, which I low-key agree with a little right, bit. I get, I like, get it. it. He's sense. He critiquing the criteria, right? It make, yeah, it makes sense. But just... It didn't sound good coming from somebody who was always hating on KD already and then takes it like the way he formed it was like, I hate Kevin Durant. Like, that's how it came off. It yeah. came off like you were just hating. But yeah. what he said made sense. Yeah. Shout out to them, though, because look, shoot, let me hop in his spaces with KD. All right. <laughs> um, shoot, going to the towards the end of this episode. Wanted to do a draft today. I haven't done a draft in a couple episodes. And with that actual NBA draft just passing on Thursday, we want to go ahead and do a draft of number one overall picks in the 2000s. So anything from 2000 NBA draft with Kenya Martin all the way to somebody want to take Wemben Yama, hmm. all that is on the table. Um, so we're going to go ahead and draft the top number one overall picks from the 2000s. Oh, and yeah. I feel like I've had the first pick the last couple, so I'll give you the first pick for this draft. Well, this is uh, not too hard for me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am going to pick LeBron James. <laughs> that was, Are that we was doing, good. like, everybody in their prime? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. We should do that. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely, definitely. Every everybody in their prime, top number one overall pick. All right, so I, my first pick is gonna be LeBron. Okay. Easy. That makes sense. 
I'm going to go to another Cavalier number one overall pick, and I'm going to take Anthony Bennett. <laughs> Yo, get out of here, bro. Bro, you want to know something <laughs> crazy that I just found out? What happened? Zion's played four, four years, right? Anthony Bennett has played four years in the NBA. Mm-hmm. Anthony Bennett has played more games than Zion. And Anthony Bennett was, like, not getting tick the last two years of his career. Zion got this year, bro. He got this one more year before he get that label, bro. Bro, yeah. I just was looking. I don't even know how I stumbled upon the basketball reference. I go and look. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, he got 100. Anthony Bennett has 151 games played. But, bro, he only – he didn't – he played 41 games in the last two years of his career. That's, and he that's, still has more games played <laughs> than Zion by, I think, a good amount, too. Like I just said, Anthony Bennett got 151. Bro, Zion has 114. That's bad, bro. Zion need to, he needs to stop eating that gumbo, bro. <laughs> Not really. He needs to lock in, bro. He needs to stay out them clubs. He needs to stop eating that gumbo. He need to stop messing with them Instagram models. He need to chill out, bro. He need to just lock in, lock get with in. a new trainer. He need to get with a new medical staff and lock in, bro. That's what he need. Okay. That man's need to be on the court. Looking at this list, though, for real, my actual first pick. If we're talking strictly primed, give me Dwight Howard. I like it. I like it a lot. All right. So, let me just get the list up. All right, so your first pick is Dwight Howard. Mm -hmm. My second pick, okay, so we got some primes up here. That's like, they ain't have the best career, but they have some primes. Like, their prime is up there. Like, Mm -hmm. you got like a Derrick Rose. Yep. We got a Kyrie in his prime. Let's pair up Kyrie Braun again. A.D. Mm, this is tough. This is tough. This is tough. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go Anthony Davis. Mm, go Anthony dang, Davis. I was thinking about AD. Okay, I'm gonna go AD. So, so we get the we get prime Bron with prime AD. We see what they did when Bron was old. Nah, it's over. It's over. Okay, this is tough. I need to make up some ground. I feel like um, Bron's always on my team when we do these drafts. I, I always end up with Bron. Um, let me look. Even Prime John Wall wasn't bad. Bro, that's what I was thinking about. Prime like, John Wall bad? would be nice. John Wall, Dwight Howard, pick and roll. I might That'd just convince nasty. myself. So you got D Rose, you got Kyrie. Or we could Twin Tower with Yao Ming. That's crazy. That'd be <laughs> the rim protection is insane. Yeah. Um I, okay. John Wall or Kyrie. I, we're talking prime. No D Rose? <sighs> that too. D Rose Dwight Howard would be crazy. That'd be lit. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I'm going to go. Since it's strictly talking about everybody in their prime, give me Derrick Rose. He is the MVP of the three people I just was talking about. <laughs> um, that is true. And we are, yo, that we breaking backboards. We're breaking backboards. Well, my next pick, I just I can't I can't pass up on the on having three of these players, LeBron, AD, Kyrie Irving. Like who knows? They might team up right now. You will never yeah, know. Imagine yeah. all them in their prime. Nah, give me that. Give me Kyrie Irving. Okay. Okay. I got Derrick Rose. I got Dwight Howard. Um, hmm. It's a couple of interesting people left. Got Derrick Rose. Got Dwight Howard. I'm looking at Prime Blake. We could just go for straight as the most athletic team ever. (laughs) Um, hmm. A couple of these young dudes too. I might say that for, for a round or two away. 
Let me get. I'm gonna take Blake Griffin. Prime Blake Griffin was a bucket. He was. Prime BG was nice. Prime BG was definitely nice. So I got Bron, AD, Kyrie. Wimby's still up here. I'm gonna have to. I don't know, bro. I'm I, bro, to... I've been, I've been keeping. I've been I'm looking not... at it. I think he'll pair real nice with AD. No one scoring in the paint. Like the paint is on lock. He can space the floor. Ooh, who else up? Who else up here? Matter of fact, I'm gonna actually go. I'm gonna go Anthony Edwards, bro. I'm gonna I go was Anthony Edwards. thinking about Ant. Oh, I'm gonna go Anthony dumb. Edwards because I I think, bro. I think Ant Man is, is gonna be different, bro. Like I think I when he like fully reaches prime, I think he's gonna be like number one on the championship team, win a ring. Like I think he's a, he's he could be on that level, bro. I think Ant is like he could be up there for sure. Okay, so you took Ant, uh, Blake, Dwight, Derrick Rose. Just for the fit, I got to go Wiggins. Okay. Okay. So I could get a little bit of spacing, get another good wing in there. What do you consider prime Andrew Wiggins? Like, which, which, what's his prime year? Is it like the Warriors years, or is it like, like, like the, I think – the best individual versions of him were in Minnesota, but the best over like individual like counting stats, the best years was in Minnesota. But this version of Andrew Wiggins right now is the best because he's asked to do less. Like Aaron Gordon has less responsibilities in Denver now, mm -hmm. but he's doing more with less. So I feel yeah. like this is the best Aaron Gordon because like he's an elite defender and like does what he needs to do on offense, whether he's, you know, sitting in a dunker spot, spacing the floor, can't hit shots if he needs to. Um, like that, I think, is the best Aaron Gordon. This Andrew Wiggins right now on the Warriors, like, does not have to carry nearly the load of the scoring output that he did. Mm -hmm. but can create, can catch and shoot, and be your best perimeter defender night in, night out. This is probably the best Andrew Wiggins in terms of, like, at least playing winning basketball. I can get with that. I definitely can get with that. So <clears throat> I got I got Kyrie. I got Ann in my two. I got Brian in my three. I got AD in my four. Man. What is stopping me from taking Wimby right now? There's there's nothing stopping me from taking Wimby. I'm not gonna lie, if you don't, man, I'm about to put Wimby at the three. <laughs> Seven five K D. <laughs> so I, I could do I could do AD at the five and get a four. I could do Eighty at the four and get a five. My options are Wimby, not taking DeAndre Eight and get out of my face. Carl Anthony Towns, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Carl Anthony Towns, Andrew Bogut. Never hey, know. Bonnie on this list, bro. Yeah, you know what I'm saying Yao Ming, Quam the Go. I could choose Kwame Brown. I could choose the Go right now. <laughs> nah, give me Wimby. Give me Wimby. I don't care that Yo. he's a rookie. <laughs> I don't, I don't care that he he's ain't a rookie. played a minute yet. <laughs> I don't care that he ain't play. I don't care about none of that, bro. Give me Wimby, bro. Just off the – bro, he can go out there. Listen, he can go out there his rookie year, get 18, eight boards, two blocks. Pair with these guys on my team, that's all I need. That's so all you I need. got Kyrie. Uh, I got Kyrie, Ant, uh, Ant-Man, LeBron, 80, Wimby. Yeah, well, I kind of got Damn. <laughs> uh, so I got D Rose, Dwight, Dwight, Blake Griffin. Blake, you need you you still need a a three, a three or no, like a two, two or three. It don't really matter. Sheesh, your team Man. highlights though, like I, bro, highlights though. Casual fans love my team. Od, yeah. <laughs> Nothing but lobs, fast break, crazy dunks, posters. You might as well complete it and go Zion. Bro, I was I thinking about that. Wait, how did no one pick Zion? Damn, I didn't realize no one picked Zion. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's because we literally was just talking about his games played. <laughs> Max. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to put Zion at the at the three. Copy. Wiggins at the two. Derrick Rose at the one. Wiggins at the two. Zion at the three. Blake Griffin at the four and Dwight at the five. Yo, do not let us get in fast break. <laughs> that is I see, crazy. 
Nah, that's that's a, that's gonna be a fun team to watch. My team is Kyrie at the one, Ant Man at the two, LeBron at the three, AD at the four, Wimby at the five. Yeah, my team is uh Wimby. I'm like is crazy. Nah, I'm sorry. Wimby, listen, it was between Wimby or Cat because I just wanted somebody who could space the floor. I was I thinking would, about Cat too. I, was I, was thinking I, about Kat. I wouldn't mind Cat with this team. Cat being the fifth best player up there, I don't mind that. That's cool. Shit, I could have DeAndre Ayton up here and would have been fine. I just don't want him on my team. He's going to cause locker room problems. Bro, he's NBA... He's not going to get along with my coach. NBA player names from, like, the 40s beat of most wild, like, pro first overall draft pick ever, 1947, selected by the Pittsburgh Ironman. <laughs> I see it right here. Bro, Clifton <laughs> McNeely. <laughs> 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 bro, that is Yo, wild, bro. You probably looking yo, at the same list as I am. Yeah, in 1955, Dick Ricketts. <laughs> <laughs> like yo, oh, bro, where? 1957, are you Hot Rod Hundley. Hot Rod. That's a fire. 1959, name. Bob Boozer. That's od. <laughs> Bob, Bob Boozer is a fire ass. That's name. Bobby Booze. Bobby Booze. <laughs> My boy, Bobby Booze. That is crazy. Ken Benson. Yeah, they had some wild names back then. That's crazy. If we did like 19, like 90 up, our, our teams would have been gross, bro. You could have had Shaq, Shaq up there. AI, Tim D. Yeah, bro. It could have got crazy. You went back. Hakeem was up there. It's wild to see like who was the first overall picks. These years, do you think we'll ever reach a point where a undrafted player wins Finals MVP? An undrafted player, it would have to be on some like Andre Iguodala type Finals MVP. It would have to be like mm. a guy who just you made such an impact. It would have to be on a team like, like if the Heat. Like the like the Miami Heat this year, like they just play like team basketball. They didn't have really have like a they had a star, but they didn't have like a guy who's killing everybody. Like cause besides like round one, Jimmy Butler wasn't like dropping outstanding numbers. And this guy would have to make like a such a huge impact that they would give it to him like on some Andre Godala stuff. Other than that, like I don't know. I can't really I, I can't really see an undrafted guy. Be end up being that good to where he's just re- legitimately putting up MVP caliber numbers. Fred Van Vliet like, not about to go drop thirty five a night in the finals. Nah, bro. <laughs> nah, bro. I'm not seeing that. But <laughs> matter of fact, I'm lying, bro. Because when the Lakers get back to the chip, yeah, and Austin and Reeves take over. Oh my God, you gonna win finals MVP? That bro, you would never hear the end of it from me, bro. I'm literally I'm buying an Austin Reeves jersey. I'm getting a, a, a poster in the wall, bro. We I'm up. If Austin Reeves got a Finals MVP, would he be the second greatest white American player ever? Yes, he's the greatest. The story he he, he take over Larry Bird. Bro, Larry who, bro? Austin AR fifteen. Who is what is a Larry? We don't care about no Larry. AR came from undrafted rags to riches, bro. He got a shoe deal now. You seen his shoe deal? Yeah, I seen it. Yeah, I seen it. I forgot. I forgot what company it was. It was some wild name. It was like in China or something, right? Yeah, bro, a lot of people on the low be signing those deals with Chinese shoe companies. Um, the shoes didn't even look that good, though. Bro, they look bad <laughs> to me. I don't even know how to pronounce it. Rigor? I don't even know how to pronounce the name of the company. But, yeah, the shoe, I'm not digging it. I I, I peeped the design, the AR-15. They got the little, for me, like the bullseye on it. I, I like it. The mm-hmm. design is whatever. Yeah, well, hey man, undrafted guy, I take any shoe if I go for being undrafted. They can give me my signature flip flops, and I'm taking them, bro. I'm, you know who need to get into basketball shoes, and if they ever do this, they stole my idea first, bro. Crocs. Do they you have imagine, basketball could shoes? Could you imagine a Croc <laughs> basketball shoe? I'm dead. Well, they still have the little holes in them. Yeah. yeah. Well, not nah, again. But they gotta, they gotta at least have a flap to put it in sport mode. Board is, <laughs> I'm dead. Bro, first I person cooping in Crocs. First person to get dunked on in some Crocs, got to pack it up, retire. But 
There's some dude on TikTok that be hoop like he's nice, but he be hooping in Crocs like when he it's does no like way. run and stuff. It's no way his ankles aren't done, bro. I swear, bro. If anyone, he be doing the crazy. The dude that be doing the crazy layups and stuff, he really be hooping in Crocs, bro. Like, nah. not like, not like, wait, not not like, like in a real game. Like, I don't even think that's possible. But like when he goes to like LA Fitness or whatever to have runs, he really plays in Crocs. That's He'd be crazy. killing him. I feel like that would be hard though. They look, yo, Croc, hit me up. I got an Croc. idea. Croc Tell sponsorship. You. That would Croc be clean. I'm here for it. I need some new hoop shoes because I, I had the court yesterday, bro. I tried to do a little turnaround dirt fade, bro. My knee buckled. I just packed my bag and left. <laughs> we get I'm old, bro. Okay, old, old, bro. Yeah, old, bro. I had to go. I went to the court. I had to stretch for like a solid like 15, 20 minutes before I even like before I even like shot a shot, bro. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not gonna be sore when I come home. I'm not doing that, bro. I'm sorry. I'm getting too old. Oh, got it. Look, I, look, CP3, Paul George, Kawhi, bro. I feel I I know the load management. <laughs> I know the load management. Me hooping yesterday. I'm I'm out for the next ten to twelve days. <laughs> Straight rest. You see me in street clothes. I'm dead. Need an ice bath. All right, some Epsom salt. <laughs> Need it all. With that, though, that's going to do it for today's episode of the Off the Glass podcast. As always, if you made it this far, you're a real one. Drop a comment if you made it this far so we can know that you made it this far in the podcast. If you're listening on YouTube, be sure to go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Turn on the notifications, like and comment on this video. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, go ahead and leave a five-star review and pre-download the podcast. Um, as always, we appreciate all the support on all the socials. Um, and we out. Peace. Yes, sir.